All right, so this is Austin Atkins. He's a country performer. Austin, just go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, I'm from Wayne County, West Virginia. I've been playing for about uh, around about seven, eight years. Uh, it was either last year or year before I got signed with SMG uh, Nashville, down in Nashville. And uh, shortly after I released my debut song, uh, Fell in Love in the Middle of the Back Road. And since then, I've just kind of been on a roll with things and looking forward to what comes next. Man, that that's awesome to hear. So, like, what got you into country music? Is that something you just grew up with, or is that something you just picked? Because that's something, like, because I'll be honest with you, I got into country music when I was in, like, middle school. It's not something I actually grew up with. So what got you into country music? Was that something you grew up with? Yeah, it's something that I grew up with. My dad, he had a lot of old cassette tapes that he'd play in the truck whenever we was driving around. And I mean, I'm not going to lie. Whenever I would, went to middle school, I went through like a hip-hop stage. <laughs> I mean, eventually I found my way back to country. Hey, didn't we all, man? So wait, what was the process like of getting signed to your record album? You said you have an album. Your, well, you got a record deal with SMG. What was that like? So really, I was just kind of, uh, honestly, just shopping around. I mean, I was talking to a bunch of different labels. I, there was one uh, label right before COVID hit called MC1 Nashville that mm -hmm. wanted me to sign on with them. But uh, the way that the labels work, like you hear a lot about these sign-on bonuses. Right. You know, like uh, Sony Records will give Luke Bryan a million-dollar sign-on bonus when they signed him. Right. But what a lot of people don't understand is a lot of the time, that's more like a bank loan. So okay. they'll give you that bonus as a loan, but you are responsible for making the company back that money by the end of your contract. And whatever oh, okay. you don't make, then you got to pay out of pocket. Okay, yeah, I, so I did not I was, realize that. Yeah. So okay. When I was talking to MC1, uh, we was talking about that. They was talking about a $10,000 sign-on bonus. And mm -hmm. like I said, this was right as COVID was starting, but... Luckily, I was able to see the trends of what was coming with the shutdowns and the pandemic and all that. Yeah. And I was, I was able to kind of swerve on that because, you know, you don't want to be stuck with $10,000. You're not going to be playing. Right. You're not going to be making music. You're stuck at home. Right. Makes sense. Right. Yeah. So that's just unfortunate timing on that one then that you got that offer right as COVID happened. That, that is unfortunate. All right. Well, right. Yeah. next question for you. If you had to compare yourself to another artist right now, who would you compare yourself to and why? That could be musically, personally, however you want to interpret that question. But if you had to compare yourself, who would you compare yourself to? You know, I've never really thought much about comparing myself to someone else. I've always I've always uh, looked at it as you're never going to get remembered trying to be the next so-and-so, so just try to be as original as possible. Okay. But, um, I mean, I love telling stories. Like, a lot of the songs that I write mm – -hmm. Uh, there might be a good 30% uh, is stuff that I actually went through. The rest of it is just kind of making up a story right. to go with the song. So as far as that goes, you know, I love the way that Eric Church is able to tell a story. Absolutely. With his songs. Absolutely. I could. So I guess I'd probably relate mostly to Eric. Okay, there you go. I, absolutely. I'd say if you if people at, people at home, if you guys listened to the show before, you guys know I'm a sucker for a good storytelling song. It's one of my favorite things about country music and songwriting in general is a good song that can tell a story so uh, eric church that's a great answer for that so i just saw you released your i just saw you released a new song called my next x is this a part of a project is this like just a song you really liked and wanted to release what was that what was that like so i'm um, actually i actually got big plans for it so okay i have a uh album that i have recorded with my producer down in nashville all right and uh, I decided that the best thing for me to do is to gradually release a couple of uh, singles from the album mm -hmm. because you kind of, you know, you, the excitement surrounding a song is kind of like a roller coaster. So mm -hmm. an artist will release a song, people will be excited about it, but then three months later that excitement's kind of died down. So right. by that point you want to release another single to build that excitement back up. Okay, that makes sense. Right. Do you ha so you so said that's kind of the idea for that. Right, okay, so this it is a part of a project that you're just going to release it like three months. That makes sense to me. Uh, right. That makes sense. Okay, if there, let's let's say there's, okay, if somebody's listening right now and they're wanting to hear your music live, I know you said you're from West Virginia. Uh, where could they potentially see you live? Do you have plans to come to North Carolina anytime soon? I know we talked about that a little beforehand, but. I mean, I travel around all over the place. 
if there's a venue in the area that wants to hire me for uh, a show, then I'm absolutely down for it. I also do private parties. So, uh, like, if somebody's just having a fire at their house, birthday party, wedding, anything like that, I'm available for hire. So, I mean, anything that happens with that, then just wherever I get booked at, I'm down to play it. I've played uh, three, four hours away. I'm supposed to be in Tennessee this Saturday. We'll see what happens. My car's uh, acting up on me, so I'm hoping that I can get it to the dealership to get it looked at before I I have to go. I always have car problems at the worst times. I feel that. All right. Oh, absolutely. Th- this question is more for just fun of it, but also like a serious question too. Have you ever thought about potentially going like in a, like one of these reality shows, like America's Got Talent, American Idol, or The Voice, or anything like that, just to get your name and voice out there? So I have tried American Idol. Okay. Um, I actually auditioned again this year. This makes like the second time I've auditioned, but I guess. Uh, one of the rules is you can't be considered a professional artist whenever you apply. And I guess where I've already had songs released that have hit the world indie charts, mm-hmm. they now consider me as a professional along with me being signed with the label and whatnot. Okay. So I don't think I'm going to be going anywhere with American Idol anytime soon. I understand that. Hey, but you got to try, though. You got to try. Right. <laughs> absolutely. All right. So let's say that there's somebody out here listening to the listen to this show right now who has never heard your music before and decides to listen to your music after this. What is something that somebody who's never listened to your music, what would, what would something you'd want them to take away from your music? What would that be? Well, I mean, obviously I like them to leave as a fan, obviously. Right. But, um, you know, hopefully it's something that really sticks with them, uh, something that they can relate to in a way. Because, you know, that whenever I write songs, I try my best to make sure that it's relatable. Mm-hmm. Because if you release a song and it's – because, you know, you always want to hear unique stories. Right. But if it's too unique and it's unrelatable, then, I mean, people's not really going to be able to uh, attach themselves to the song. Right. I, say, I think that's what also makes some of these bigger artists what makes them so popular is just how relatable some of the songs are. I think that's why, like, right. I think that's why, honestly, why Morgan Wallen got so big is just because of how many people he writes a lot of heartbreak songs. That's, people relate to that and just eat it up, pretty much. So I, th- I think that's a great quality to have yeah, in absolutely. any song music. All right, I say, what inspires you to write music? Is it a personal thing? Is it just somebody in your life? What inspires you to do what you do? I mean. What inspires me to write music is I just love music. Right. But, I mean, for each individual song, I mean, I could be, I could overhear a conversation somewhere. I could literally be standing in the shower and uh, a verse will just hit me like a ton of bricks. Right. So it's really just random that the inspiration comes. Hey, that makes sense. So if you could, okay, this this question, dead or alive, if you could write and record a song with anybody who would you want to do that with? And this is dead or alive. Any artist, dead or alive? I see here. Dead or alive. All right. Um, I don't, honestly, I probably want to write with uh, Michael Jackson, honestly. Okay. I mean, that dude, he was phenomenal, Like especially with the storytelling aspect Absolutely, of it. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, he was a phenomenal writer. Absolutely. That is not the direction I was expecting, but hey, I, I I respect that a lot. Hey, like I said, I love a good story. I do and too. Honestly, you got to look at Michael Jackson. I mean, he's had honestly right there around the end of his career, he was releasing songs that could be turned into full length feature films. Yeah, <laughs> I mean seriously. All right, last question for you, Austin, and then I'll let you get on. I know you've got kids that are sick right now, so I'll let you go take care of them after this. What advice would you give to another artist who is trying to do go down a similar path as you? I would tell them up front, first and foremost, it is a very, very hard industry to stick with, very mm-hmm. cutthroat, and most of the time it's very hard to make a career out of it. Right. I mean, you got uh, you got to think there's there's not that many career artists out there. There's more uh, people that do it as a hobby, which there's nothing wrong with that. But mm-hmm. whenever you're trying to make a career out of it and you go somewhere and you're like, yeah, I charge 300 for three hours. Right. And they look at you and they say, well, so-and-so has been doing this for 20 years and they only charge 150. Right. 
you know, it's kind of it's kind of hard to get in there, you know, unless sure. you have something really special to deliver. It's good to know people. <laughs> it is good to know people when it comes to that stuff. Right. All right, man. Well, hey, so, I, you know, I just tell them to kind of just uh, kind of just stick with it. It's yeah. hard. It's rough, but it's worth it in the end. Absolutely. Hey, that's good to hear. All right, Austin. Well, hey, I appreciate you coming on the air with us. Everybody, this is Austin Adkins. Austin, where can they find your music if, if they would want to listen to you? Right now, I'm released just about anywhere you could think. YouTube, Tidal, Deezer, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes. I mean, about anywhere you can think of, I'm released. Awesome, man. Well, hey, everybody, go check out Austin Adkins. He just released his new song on September 1st, My Next Ex. You guys, I personally really like it myself. So if you guys like it, I highly, highly recommend you go check them out. Austin, thank you guys. Thank you for coming on the air with me, buddy. Any final words for you? I mean, I just appreciate you guys having me. I really do. And uh, like I said, you know, I hope everybody enjoys the song. And uh, if you want to learn more about me, just feel free to reach out. I have Facebook, TikTok. I'm sure you can find me on there. Absolutely, man. All right. Well, hey, thank you for coming on. And up next, we got Midlands 2 to 2 Step. Y'all check this out.